Ready? Ready. Cheers. Cheers. Hmm. Hi, I'm Dave. And I'm Desiree. And we're from High Gravity. And I don't know why we're here, because we've already done a burn a bag video. Well, but we have to do another video because I noticed that the old video was seven years old and there are so many things in the old video that are out of date. We've changed many things since then and uh, so we better talk about them in a new video. Okay, so let's highlight the new stuff then. Number one, we have a new controller. The new controller is a Warthog EBC 130. I say new, we've had it for a few years, uh, but it is different from the one that is in the old video. And it has two modes of operation, mash and boil. Okay, well and that's a pretty good reason to do a new video, well, honestly. Yeah. Just that alone might have been <laughs> yeah. enough reason. That might have been, yeah. Uh, another reason is we used to have the temperature probe up at the top and we moved it close to the heat down in the vessel itself. Okay. And being close to the heat helps us maintain tighter temperature control over a wide, a wide range of situations. Okay, that makes sense, that makes sense. So it results in more frequent, shorter bursts of heat. Yeah. Um, I see that the connectors are new. The connectors are new. People expressed a preference for the stainless steel cam lock. Um, so we build the systems with these. There's two elbows and two straights, and that makes a real nice uh, loop to recirculate with. Okay. Uh, the pump's new. It's the uh -huh. Blickman Riptide. The Riptide's much better than the old pump. The old pump was the chugger, and the Riptide has an integrated linear flow valve. Okay. Which is just that alone is worth the extra 50 bucks. Which allows you to control the flow. That's right. Yeah. It also has a tri-clamp mounted pump head, okay. which means it comes apart in seconds and gets cleaned every time you use it. That's awesome. That's, that's, that's very cool. And one other nice thing it has is a switch right on the pump. So, in case of emergency, hit switch, right? <laughs> you can always control the pump with the switch. And we have a new bag. The bag is new. Uh, this bag is made by Michael Wilser, and it is less restrictive, better suited for a recirculating system. Very cool, very cool. Than the old one. And All I right. think, oh, one more thing that's new. The spray head is a spiral stainless steel spray head. You can't clog this thing, and it results in a nice fanned out spray to help the flow pattern cover the vessel well and minimize temperature differences within. Within, okay, cool. So that's a lot of new stuff. Let's talk about what the controller does that's, that's new. The, this controller has two modes of operation, mash and boil. In mash mode, it maintains your temperature set point. In boil mode, you select a percentage of power from zero to 100%. Okay. So I've got the water sitting here at 152 degrees, and we're going to go ahead and dough in. Yeah, let's do it. All right. We're doing a 10-gallon batch today. I'm going to make sure we don't have any dry dough balls. All right, so we just doughed in and the temperature's reached the set point 152 and we get a little beep beep that tells us that and the pump's running the heat's running it's going to maintain that temperature for your one hour mash so i freshened my beer you have not nah but i'm gonna finish this one first i say that while the uh mash is uh, still going on we talk about the pros and cons of a uh, burner bag sure each system configuration has its own list of pros and cons, and we build all three versions still quite a bit. The single vessel system we have here saves time, it saves space, it saves cost, but it's less efficient than a two or a three vessel system uh, with the same recipe. Right. So how do you make up for that? Is that more grain, right? Sure, that's the easy way. You, yeah. can, you can just adjust your recipe, bump the base a little bit and uh, get the same get gravity, the same gravity in same two or three hours less time than a, than a three vessel system. Right. Um, there are more things that affect the efficiency with the single vessel system, so it might be a little harder to hit your volume and your gravity numbers. Right. And so sometimes 
after mashing, you might check your gravity and check your volume and then decide which is your target. What are you happy with? <laughs> volume or gravity? But you're still saving a ton of time right. uh, on every brew day. You can still uh, still do 10 gallon batches. Um, you may have to you have to play may have to play with it more, and you're probably absolutely not going to be able to do a high gravity 10 gallon batch in a burner bag system. Right, with the, with the 15 gallon vessel, uh, you might not want to put more than 10 gallons of water in there to accommodate your grain bill, and so you might plan on just doing a little bit of sparging after you lift the grain right. bag. Right. To get the sugars and get the volume sure. back up. Which is what we're doing tonight because we're doing a 10 gallon batch. Right. So we've got this thing loaded up just to the top. You can see, I don't know if you can see, but it is very full. And I think we'll have to sparge with at least a gallon of water, maybe a gallon and a half, to get our pre boil volume back up to where we want it to be. Yeah, we probably want it to be about 11, a little over 11 gallons. Okay. So, I think we kind of went over the pros and the cons of the, of the one vessel. One vessel. All right, so we're at the end of the mash. We're going to go ahead and mash out. That's optional. But we're going to go ahead and change the t set temperature set point here to 168. And so that means selecting the number and hitting the button to set it. Temperature is now set to 168. And it's going to rise pretty quick because we've got a 4,500 watt oil coil in here. That's a lot of power. And that's one of the reasons we put the temperature probe close to the element to keep that power under tighter control. So we're sitting at 168. We're mashed out. We're going to go ahead and lift the bag. If you did not have a basket, you would need a hoist or a pulley to lift that up and stabilize it above the kettle, let it drain. We do not have a hoist or a pulley, so we are going to lift up the basket and stabilize it and set it back down with a little less hook like that. We like simple solutions. Uh, and that's about as much as a guy can lift and uh, handle without a pulley or a hoist. So we're going to turn off the heat in the pump for a moment. We're going to close the valves. We're going to remember to close the valves this time. Yeah, there we go. I'm just put that down right there. All right, wish me luck. <laughs> Where's the handle at? There it is. Ah, oh, good. Get this hooked around. You have to lift slowly, and it gets lighter as the liquid drains out. <laughs> All right, we've got the basket lifted and stabilized. It's draining. We're going to go ahead and turn the heat back on. We're going to change this from mash mode to boil mode. And that's just a bump of the knob and a turn until it says mode boil and then bump the knob again. Now we're displaying a percentage of power. We're going to go crank that up to 100% for right now. We are a couple of gallons short of our pre-boil volume, so I'm going to go ahead and just do a little sparging. And it's going to be tough to do this without a little bit of help. Never fear, your assistant is here. Yay! This is filtered water, and we're just going to 
dribble it a little bit over the grain bed. So we win. Go ahead. It doesn't even matter if it's hot. The grain's plenty hot. And we're just going to do a little minimal amount of sparging. All right, so we boiled added hops, just like you always do, and we got to the end of the boil. We've got 10 and a half gallons of wort in the kettle. We've got our chiller hooked up. We've got the water turned on, and it doesn't have to be any more complicated than this. You can just let it drop into the fermenter, adjusting the flow rate as needed to get the target temperature in the brewing season when the water's coming out of the faucet cool enough. This works pretty well. Mine too. Thanks for joining us. You can always check out more information on our YouTube channel or you can go to www.highgravitybrew.com or you can hit me direct at dave at highgravitybrew.com. And stay tuned for uh, more uh, updated and uh, you know, currentified videos. Cheers. Currentified. Yeah. Maple fruit. I thought. Currentified. All right. All right. Wish me luck. Ah, oh, the top. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna go ahead and set that down. No, let's uh, oh, start over. You wanna close the valve.